independent events are very important in probability and statistics. Intuitively, we'd think that two events are independent if the occurrence of one doesn't affect the occurrence of the other. The way it's defined, though, is the probability of A intersect B is probability of A times probability of B. In other words, we say that the probability of the intersection splits up or factorizes into just multiplying the individual probabilities here. If this rule doesn't hold, or this equation of formula doesn't hold, that, that means the events are not independent. So, for independence, we ver verify this rule here. Now, as far as the intuition is concerned, if two events are independent, then the probability of A given B, by the rule for conditional probabilities, the probability of A intersect B over probability of B, because of independence, I can now write this simply as probability of A times probability of B over probability of B. These cancel off and I get probability of A. So, for independent events, whether B has occurred or not, doesn't affect the probability of A. Probability of A given B is the same as probability of B. Likewise, if I look at probability of B given A, the same thing occurs. And the top line is probability of A intersect B over probability of A. And this, again, will be written as probability of A times probability of B. These cancel off. I get probability of B. So, likewise here, the occurrence of A doesn't affect the occurrence, probability of occurrence of B. And that's what independence means intuitively. And so you can see the definition we had earlier actually does support the intuition we had. Now, don't confuse these two things. Mutually exclusive and independence are different concepts. Two events are mutually exclusive or disjoint if the intersection is zero. So this diagram over here shows you two events A and B that are disjoint or mutually exclusive. Independence actually means probability of A intersect B is probability of A times probability of B. So there's a different. Example here with bank data. So we've got here that A is the event that an employee is male and B is the event that an employee is a job grade 5 or above. Are these two independent? So we're going to find probability of A and B. So probability of A here works out to be 68 over 208. It's just a matter of counting. Probability of B here is 35 over 208. And probability of A in the sector B is 25 over 208. So if I look at probability of A times probability of B, it's not the same as probability of A intersect B, so these two events aren't independent. So the question further is, is gender in independent of job grade? And no, based on this calculation, gender is not independent of job grade. In fact, we know that males are more likely to be at higher job grades than females, as we saw earlier. Example over here, a woman is selling her house. She believes that there's a 0.3 chance that a person who inspects her house will purchase it, assuming that people inspecting the house decide independently whether or not to purchase the house. What is the probability that more than two people, more than two people, will have to inspect the house before it's sold? So, here we've got events. A1 is that the first person who views the house will buy it. And A2 is that the second person to view the house buys it. And A1 and A2 are independent, as we have been told. And so what we need to do is work out, essentially, when we say that more than two people will have to inspect the house before it's sold, what we're saying is that the first person doesn't buy it, and the second person doesn't buy it. So that's what we're looking at, A complement intersect A2 complement. A1 complement intersect A2 complement. Now, it turns out that if A and B are independent, and then any combination of A and B with complements also are independent, and you can show that, I won't show that here, those interested can ask me afterwards, but by using the result then, probability of A complement intersect A1, A1 complement intersect A2 complement is probability of A1 complement times probability of A2 complement, and that's 1 minus 0 0.3 times 1 minus 0 0.3, 0 0.49. Now, you can draw a tree, tree diagram for this problem, and again, I'll let you do that yourself, and you can ask me afterwards if you have questions for that. Here's a, a final question here that, again, I'll leave for you to try because the solution isn't given here. You can try this yourself and ask me questions afterwards. In the end here, what I've said all this here, axioms really mean properties of probabilities, and the rules of calculating things like probability of A, union B, probability of A, intersection B, multiplication rule, all those kinds of things independence and disjoint or mutually exclusive events, and then solve some problems using these conditions, probability and tree diagrams. Now, 
we won't spend much time on this. This is just introduction to probability, so we can move on to the stats part of the course. But some of these may, may be of interest to you otherwise. But you will see some of the things we look at here will be used later. So we're not going to spend any, too much time here solving problems. There are some questions and problems in the lab this week. But other than that, we won't spend too much time on this. This is more for information and just some background so that the rest of the thing we do from here makes a bit more sense. Thank you. Bye.